Thank you, Elliot, for the introduction. And thank you, Elliot, Paul, and Alexis for organizing and inviting us to, to speak with you guys today. So I head up the uh, data and analytic engineering group at Lyle, and I'm going to be talking about what we're doing. We are focused on cancer cell therapies. And for those of you who don't know, the idea behind cancer cell therapies is to use cells, living cells, from our immune system as an approach to eliminating cancers. Our immune system is actually capable of recognizing these, um, recognizing cancer cells as they're, as they're coming to be. And they can actually, our immune system can actually destroy them. But some, some of these tumor cells are able to evade or escape our immune system. And so really the idea here is how can we supercharge our immune system so that it can recognize and destroy tumor cells? Uh, one of the most kind of well-known um, approaches um, using this type of therapy is CAR-Ts. Um, in this diagram here, I show sort of how these types of therapies work. So um, what you would do is you would take um, a blood sample from the patient, you would extract out T cells, and then you would isolate the T cells. You would then engineer these T cells so that they are now specific to, um, to tumor cells and will destroy tumor cells. You would then um, basically grow them and expand them to millions of cells. And then you infuse this, the, the patient back with these cells so that the, the patient is treated. While this is a really cutting edge approach, um, it also has um, some limitations. Today, it's really been proven to be successful in, in liquid tumors. But it hasn't been um, shown to be um, successful, at least in the clinic, for solid tumors. And solid tumors are actually 90% of the cancers that are out there. So this is obviously a, is a big gap. And this is really what we are set out to do at, at Lyle. So what we are doing at Lyle is we're focusing on three of the really um, unsolved challenges for how to make these types of therapies work for solid tumors. So we have the, this triangle here that kind of depicts the three approaches that, that we're looking for. So one is we're focused on redefining how the cells are prepared to be able to be used for these types of therapies. Another is we are modulating the T cells to maintain their functionality so that they can work in a solid tumor microenvironment. And then the other is we are looking at how to control the T cells to be specific and to be safe so that they can be used for solid tumor therapies. Our, um, our CEO of our company, his name is Rick Klausner. He has headed up the National Cancer Institute. He's formed a number of companies, including uh, Juno and Grail, and he's really been kind of one of the pioneers in this field. Um, in addition, our, our head of R&D is Stan Riddell. He also helped co-found Juno, and he worked for a couple decades at um, the Fred Hutch Cancer Institute, and he's done really some of the pioneering um, research to, to show how these types of therapies could be used on, on patients. Uh, we also have um, Bob Nelson uh, from Arch Ventures as who, someone who's on our board, board of directors and is one of our lead investors. We have a really amazing uh, leadership team and some of the really kind of the world's best scientists in this field at our company. Uh, we've been around for a little over a year and we've raised uh, $600 million in financing and we are gonna be around 175 employees by the end of the year. And we have two offices. We have an office located in South San Francisco and an office located in Seattle. We really feel that it's this convergence of financing, number of employees, and really kind of the top minds in this field that really poises us to be, you know, really the, the leaders and really um, solve this unmet need of therapies for solid tumors. Now, kind of uh, segueing into kind of the, the software and the cloud infrastructure side of things. The group I'm in is called Information Sciences. And um, we are, you can, and just, just like um, Elliot had in his slides, we are really focused on accelerating the science at Lyle. And um, really, if we think about kind of the foundation for this, it's about that cloud infrastructure, it's about the security, it's about the data platform, a lot of the stuff that the scientists don't necessarily work with directly. But then as we look about how to utilize that foundation to, to really accelerate the science, that's where we have a lot of other people on our team that are capable of putting these solutions in place. So as part of our group, we have people who are focused on robotics automation, people who can use robotics in the labs and implement those types of solutions so that we can have higher throughput experiments and collect the data more easily off those instruments. We also are, of course, looking at software as a way to automate it, as well as looking at custom software solutions for capturing that data, as well as analyzing that data. 
And then we also have people who are really using advanced analytics such as AI and ML to, to, to further interrogate this data. The, the, the platform that, that we're building in the information sciences group, this is you know, some representation of it. I'm not gonna go through all of the details, but I think there's a few interesting points to, 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 to illustrate. So I think one is, and I think this is probably actually common to, to, to all of you, is that you know, we have a lot of different sources for this data. So um, we have our labs in Seattle, we have our labs in South San Francisco, that's really kind of the, that generates, generates the bulk of the data. Um, we also work with CROs as well as collaborators that are, that are giving us data. I think one of the kind of the biggest and most interesting challenges that we have at Lyle is just the huge diversity of data that, that we have. So we have data ranging from flow cytometry to next generation data, next generation sequencing data to pathology data to, to clinical data. And I think one of the things that's challenging about this is that some of this data is, is really well structured, some of this data is unstructured. And even for the structured data, this is data that doesn't fit well within kind of the usual sort of data lake technology, such as like AWS Glue and, and lake formation. Um, so what we're looking to do is to really augment those types of services with our own ways of kind of really cataloging and indexing the data that ends up on our data lake. So this is really kind of depicted at the top of the diagram where as data arrives on our data lake, we would have lambda functions that are kicked off, which then index that data and put that data into, into Elasticsearch. Another is that um, there are a number of um, specialized window applications that we do support. So there are specialized off-the-shelf applications for things like analyzing pathology images or analyzing flow cytometry data. And these are really the cutting edge tools that, that our scientists need to use. And so rather than them working with this data off of their laptops, we wanna make sure that the data is as close to, uh, sorry, the, the tools are as close to the data as possible. So we use Amazon Workspaces as a way to, to host these, um, these Windows applications in the cloud. On the right side, I have all of the kind of the infrastructure, security, and compliance aspects. Uh, we are building this with um, the idea that we're going to need to be able to be HIPAA and GDPR compliant and potentially GXP compliant. So all of our infrastructure is written as code and everything has automated testing too. So this will really significantly speed, out, speed up how we are able to meet our compliance needs. Um, I mentioned before that we are building a number of kind of custom applications. We are running this on EKS, which is Amazon's managed um, Kubernetes service. And then the other is we have a lot of use cases which require lots of compute. And that's why we have things like Athena and Redshift and EMR listed. But then we also have high performance compute cluster listed and that's really what I'm gonna spend the rest of this talk about. So um, one of the things that, you know, kind of if we flip back and we were talking about how we're trying to come up with solutions to solid tumor therapies, one of the things that we're doing is we're trying to design de novo proteins that can be used to improve the immune cell function. The, the software we use is called Rosetta, it comes from the University of Washington. One of the central dogmas of molecular biology is that you have a DNA sequence, which then of course encodes an amino acid sequence, which then um, confers a, um, a protein structure, which of course has a, has, a, has a function associated with it. One of the things that we're doing, which is kind of really one of the more cutting edge, mo modern approaches to, to, to protein structure stuff, is we're actually starting with the function. So we start with what is the specific function that we're looking to solve? And this could be you know, the specific CAR-T architecture, it could be a function or a specific part of the, the CAR-T protein. And so we start there and we start with what function we're trying to solve and then we work backwards and we come up with what is the protein that we're trying to build. Leventhal's uh, paradox um, states that even for a small um, protein with 100 amino acids, there is an astronomical number of possible confirmations. And this obviously means that it would take a huge amount of compute to be able to solve these types of needs. Fortunately, we have you know, people who have domain knowledge, we have software that can help reduce this problem to something that's much more manageable, but it still does require a lot of computation. And really, um, you know, just solving computation, trying to make it fast for the sake of it is not really the end goal. The real goal here is how can we decrease the time that it takes to design proteins so that we can have rapid iterations between designing prote proteins computationally and then testing things in the lab. Fortunately, Rosetta can be made highly paralyzable because it's embarrassingly parallel. 
when we started out, we had a single large server that, and it would take about one month to do, to do an experiment. Um, as we built out our, our HPC, or high performance compute cluster environment, we are now able to take a single experiment and compute it basically overnight in about 10 hours. That's spanning about 500 um, M4X large. Um, and the reason why it still takes about 10 hours is that the, the actual computations are stochastic, so some, some of the tasks will complete in minutes, and then some will take about 10 hours. But it's even better than this, because we actually have you know, multiple protein engineer scientists, each of which could be running their own experiments, and each of them could be running multiple experiments. So you know, at our peak right now, we have run up to about 30 simultaneous experiments, and this is a pretty amazing place for us to be, where now we're actually limited not by, by the compute, but actually by how fast we can test things in the lab. So to, to build this uh, compute infrastructure, we really are relying heavily on two main services from, from Amazon. So one is Parallel Cluster, and the other is FSX. So Parallel Cluster is actually not a service, but what it is is an open source um, cloud computing uh, framework. Um, put up by Amazon, and it lets you spin up HPC clusters really easily. And then FSX is a very scalable um, file system that really can be used for these kinds of computational workloads. The way it works is that our, our scientists will uh, basically use the um, parallel cl cluster command line interface tool to spin up a cluster. We let each of them spin up their own cluster so that each cluster is independent. Um, and can be torn down and we don't have to have any compute up when we don't need it. Um, as part of um, using the command line interface, there's a configuration file that they need to specify, and that's something that we provide to them. And there's a few different things that that configuration file has. So one is it points to a specific um, Amazon machine image, AMI, that, that we build through Packer. And this um, AMI has all of the dependencies that we need to run these computations. So it has um, Rosetta on there, it has um, Pandas, NumPy, Python, it has Dask on there, and Dask is a parallel computing um, uh, library that makes it really easy to work with HTPC clusters. Another configuration that we have is um, the job scheduler. So uh, we use Slurm as our job scheduler, and for those who don't know, a job scheduler um, is something where you submit jobs or tasks to it, and then it distributes the compute across all of the different worker nodes. And then it's really with parallel cluster and this um, that it, it takes care of doing the auto scaling on the on the EC2 servers. Um, once they you know, fire up their cluster and they run their, their code, they then um, will basically take the results of that and bring it into a Jupyter notebook. Um, the output of Rosetta is really a bunch of score matrices as well as protein structures. Um, generally, it can be hundreds or it can even be up to thousands of protein models. And what they ultimately do is use their biological intuition as well as look at st the statistics that are output by Rosetta to take those hundreds or thousands of protein models and reduce it down into something that's much, much more manageable. Um, and um, ultimately, this kind of takes us to really where, you know, where we want to go with this. You know, the computational scaling has been fantastic. Uh, you know, Parallel Cluster has been amazing in that it's really been pretty low effort for us to, to get this up and running really quickly. And it's it been able to give an environment to the scientists where they don't have to think about the underlying um, computational infrastructure that much. Um, but where we're going from here is we are want to make sure that the computations that they do are fully reproducible and fully documented. Um, I think as we all know, as we think about things like you know, FDA submissions down the line, stuff like that, we need to make sure that all of this is traceable. And then the other aspect of this is that you know, as these proteins are designed, the next step, as I mentioned before, is that we will actually test these in the lab. And again, one of the things we're working on is how do we tie these computational experiments to what is actually going on in the lab so we can really have a fully traceable end-to-end -end, um, data lineage for our data. Um, and with that, you know, uh, we have offices in South San Francisco and Seattle, and if you want to work on the next generation of cell therapies, please come join us. Thank you very much.